that over here on the blackboard, I added a few examples. These are pulled directly from the book. <clears throat> it shows you here the different types of relationships, right? You look at that one here, a one-to-one -one relationship. Okay, you see that this table here, uh, you know, links directly to a locker, right? So that means a, a member here, a user or whatever, a club member has exactly one locker, okay? Assuming in a perfect environment, right? So we have over here, the, the, the dashed line here you see, as opposed to a solid line um, like this, okay? The solid line means there's, there's a very, uh, um, what do you call this one? Um, uh, dependent, I, I guess you can say that. <clears throat> okay, so they have a very strong connection. The solid line, that, and then the dash line here is like a, something is kind of weak and dependent, okay? So the locker can exist by itself. A locker doesn't have to be assigned to a member, right? If you think about that type of relationship. So you see the dash line. But for, our ex for our example, we're not gonna wor worry about the data, the data line or the solid line. We'll just use the solid line for our program, okay? The uh, plus sign up here, if you look like plus, it's actually it's not a plus, it's a, it's a, if you think about a line, you draw one single tick line on this, on this side, it just means it's a one, right? So it's a one, so you have a one to one relationship. The circle here, it's an O or circle right in front of this line here, indicates that it's also optional, right? So that means that a club member can have only one locker. In this case, you cannot have two lockers, okay? <clears throat> so have only one locker or the club member have, may have no locker, okay? So that's why it's optional. You can have zero locker or at least, but at most one locker. If we read the other way around, a locker can be assigned to only one club member, okay? The one here, exactly only one, or it may not be assigned to any member at all, right? So that's how you read it. From this direction, you're referring to the symbols on the opposite side, okay? Not the one that is next to it, okay? So the next to it is referring from the other side relationship. So a um, little bit um, tricky how this is read, but always refer to the other side with the line joins the other table. So that's what it means. Over here, we have one too many and use the annotation as opposed to the M, but it, it's fine. So if you read from the club member side to the uniform side, we say one club member can have the O is zero uniform. So they don't have to have a uniform, it's not required. Or they can have many uniforms, okay? So a, a team member, for example, like the Packers, right? They have two or three different types of kinds of uniforms, okay, like that. But a, a uniform can only be worn by one member, right? Okay, or none. It could just they have extra uniform and not being used. Okay. They have the company here is it many to many. <clears throat> so the company here can have. In many, I'm not sure what the part number part number is here, but um, it doesn't matter, right? A company can have no part number or no parts, or it can have many, right? No parts or one or many, okay? But the part number, in this case, cannot exist by itself. It must have, uh, for example, exactly one, only one. Well, I mean, I, I guess it, it could, it could exist so because of this dotted line. A part number can have exactly only one company, can be assigned to one company. It cannot be assigned to two companies, right? So there's no O, so this is not optional. It must be assigned to that, okay? <clears throat> so that is how you read this uh, uh, diagram here. Down here is another one. So we have something that now we add a third table here to represent the many-to-many. -many. I mentioned earlier that when you have a many-to-many, -many, it's, it's easily drawn this way, so it's understood, okay? <clears throat> but when you actually get it down to the uh, physical design, then it's not possible to just write your code like this in the program. It will not work and it won't work. So that's why sometimes the ERD will go a step further by adding a junction table here so that they are somehow connected. Okay, and then in the junction table, you will see 
So this, this part number here, even though they don't have the information here, so we can say that this is also the primary key for each of these tables. And then in the junction table, you'll see that it lists both the primary keys from both tables are joined together here, okay? <clears throat> so this is a junction table. It's very common this way when you join two tables and a many to many relationship. And this has to do with the price, right? Because the price could change based on a company. Like if you think about the parts for, of, a, of a car, right? My dealership, okay, owns a car. It could be a car. And I say, you know, my dealership has a Tesla S3. The price of my company, I sell it for, let's say, 60K. But the next dealer also has an S3 and they have a different price, right? So if you put a, a, if you put a single price here, that means all companies, all dealerships will have the same car at the same price. And that's not true, right? So that's why the only way to do that to make it work is they can have the same car but the price will be different, okay? So that's how you would map it like this. And this is also how you actually design it using the um, physical uh, modeling as well next time we do it next week.